In this video, we're going to show you how to be able to build your first processes very quickly and easily. The first one we'll show you is how to import current processes that you may have built in the past. This could be in BPMN format from third party tools, in Excel, any lists of processes, tasks, roles, risks, controls, whatever you may have. Or in this sample, we're going to do a Visio file. So the first thing is just to browse to any Visios that you may have already built in the past. Select the location that you want to import it. In our case, we're going to import it into our trial sandbox. And that's it. From there, I'll pull up the actual Visio that we're going to be importing. And as you can see, this Visio file has two tabs. One, which is an overview of the sub-processes and the handoff between the hiring manager and the HR manager. And then the develop job description, which is actually another tab, in this case, has roles, secretary, HR manager, and hiring manager, and the associated tasks within each lane. Our system is going to convert this into BPMN notation, as well as create the sub-processes and build the process hierarchy, as well as the roles and associated to their related tasks. So by simply Clicking here, I can now see that there's a recruit to hire new sub process within the trial sandbox. In this case, you can see all of the associated tasks and processes that were built with the associated roles. If I click on the graph view, we quickly see here that there's the HR manager as well as the hiring manager with their associated lanes. And then actually exploding those, I can see the sub process directly within the recruit to hire level or drill down inside of it and expose all the details of the developed job description process, which similar to before, we have the secretary, the hiring manager and the HR manager with their associated tasks. What's interesting is the responsibility that was attached in this case, the secretary, if we actually jump to the secretary, you see it brings us into the org module, which is now a central place where all the roles are managed. And not only uh, was the secretary linked to the associated tasks, but it was reused across multiple tasks. So you can quickly see the impact of that role centrally within the role module. So the secretary is linked to the notify HR of opening and they're part of the imported org unit. And from here, you can then reuse this role across your organization. So as you can see within the imported org unit, you have those three roles that were utilized within both processes that have been since imported. So as an example, if I click on the HR manager, same concept, we see he's on the develop job description and recruit to hire, as well as he's in responsible for writing and modifying job descriptions task within the develop job description process directly. If I click to that, it brings me directly back to that process. Now let's go ahead and build a process from zero. In this case, we haven't actually mapped the process in the past in a different format. So again, let's go into our trial sandbox and there's multiple ways to quickly build a process. The first, up here in the right-hand corner, we have the new. This is a central location that allows you to build all of your content at any point in time centrally. So the first thing we'll do is create a new process. Let's create the change management process. And within that process, we actually have the ability to define all the tasks up front. So this is a great quick forms uh, solution for people who aren't even comfortable with process mapping. They just add in the step-by-step -step of what needs to be done and it'll build the process automatically in the backend. So the first thing is a change request. And this is done by the change initiator. And let's go ahead and what is the details of the change request? I'll actually could obviously put in tables, images, bullets, uh, really all the details associated with the change request. And I'll go in and add another task below that. So in this case is to assess the change. So as you can see, there is spell check throughout the entire solution. So 
obviously I missed the letter there and it's highlighting uh, the error immediately. So there is full spell check capabilities throughout the solution, including in multi-language support. The next thing is the to assess the change, we can say is responsible by the change manager and then give a either a step-by-step -step procedure, screenshots, any associated information with doing that task. And then let's say the last step is actually to go ahead and implement the change. So in this case, again, who's responsible for implementing the change? Um, let's say we don't put it this time because we'll show you that afterwards. We'll just close it out the process at this point in time. And actually for you to know, you can reorder the tasks afterwards. You see by dragging and dropping, it will actually change the order of the process and build the map dynamically in the backend. So let's go ahead and click the create process. As you can see, it automatically built the entire change management process from end to end including the associated roles that we've assigned. And it generated the details of each of those tasks as well. So we can view that in map, as well as in the text form. By clicking here on the plus button, you'll see all the details of the step-by-step -step work instructions or standard operating procedure. Um, but let's go ahead and map this. So another alternative way than using the quick form is to use traditional mapping. And in terms of traditional mapping, we have two different ways. So the first thing is you'll see that this view is swim lane. This was an automatic swim lane that our system generated based on the roles or assets or org units or really any of the information that has been defined. You're able to set that up within your map preferences based on the different types of views that you have, swim lane, graph, matrix, or process preference, which is really a mix of all the different types. Because depending at the level you are in your hierarchy, you may want to use different types. So let's go ahead and actually edit this. And what we're, we're currently in swim lane format. So what that means is if I right click on the lane, it'll automatically assign all the tasks that are in that lane to that role. So doing my quick search, I quickly see that there is no change owner, but the change owner is responsible for this task. So note, you do not need to have pre-built all these roles, assets in advance. By clicking this icon next to any of the associations, you can always at any point in time assign and create new objects on the fly. So if I were, I can actually select where I want to create it in my overall structure or just put it at the top level. There's no real limitation there. And then using the right click or the plus button above, I have the ability to add a new role on the fly, which doesn't currently exist. In this case, the change owner. Let's go ahead and add him. And then actually assign the change owner to this task. So you can see now we're assigning the change owner to the lane. So automatically any tasks in that lane already now contain that role. So implement change, the change owner has that task. So what's unique about the swim lane mapping is that by dragging and dropping shapes, automatically it'll take on the lane. So if I put in another task, Let's say we had actually forgotten, right? We went straight from assessing the change to implementing the change. Well, for one, by dragging that shape, you see it takes on the change manager. Additionally, double clicking, I can go ahead and add another task name in here. So let's say review and approve the change, considering we may have missed it. And then I can actually drag and drop the transitions. And by moving the shape, automatically the transitions will realign. So that's this auto reroute feature, which is really nice. Additionally, um, by simply holding down the mouse, 
and then dragging, you see I can add any transitions on the fly, meaning you do not need to drag and drop transitions. You can just simply hold down your mouse and then go ahead and uh, link it to any other shape within the map. And another very important item to mention is we do have this nice auto layout feature, which will allow you to quickly generate views different layouts without having to actually manually lay out every single task. So you really have a lot of options there. Another thing that I'll show you, one more option of how to map, if you prefer not mapping in swim lane view, well, you also can switch what to what's called graph view. In graph view, you can set that within the process details. So what I did there was I right clicked on the map and edit process details. So by editing the process details, change management, the first thing I noticed is that we didn't add a description to change management. So let's go ahead and do that, meaning that can be done directly from the map. All features that you saw earlier in the quick form are all available within from the map. Additionally, on the properties tab, I can go ahead and switch what's called the process display preference. So in this case, I don't want a swim lane, I want a graph. I want to be able to edit in graph and manage it in graph. And again, you have all those activities that we created on the fly earlier. So you see here now, this map is now in graph view, which I could actually do an auto layout now without the swim lane format. So the difference here is the information is the same. It's really just a view of the same process in a different format and really a preference of how you prefer to map because now I don't drag and drop inside of lanes and assign the role to the lane. I simply right click and assign the responsibility directly to the task. So you see edit responsibility on a single task. And now let's say we added uh, uh, accounting or since this relates to change, Let's say the change manager is a responsible, but the change initiator is consulted. So I'm setting a different level of veracity. So I could do that task by task or do the entire map at the same time. And this is available in both the swim lane and the graph mapping, where if you right click uh, anywhere on the white space and hit auto responsibility, edit responsibilities, you can go in and set up the entire RASI all at the same time. So in this case, I'll go ahead and say the change owner is for the change requests, it, or let's go ahead with review and approve the change, is responsible to the change manager, but is also consulted to the change initiator. And from here, um, you'll see a lot of different options within the right click. We're not gonna go through all of them, but you have the ability to auto sequence. It'll automatically take on its parent sequence. So you can auto sequence the entire tree. And you can really edit all the, the details or the BPMN options of each uh, flow object, uh, change colors, set boundary events, really a lot of options there, but we're not gonna go through all of them today. And of course, things, basic things like cut, copy, paste, whether it be within the same map or another map. So you see here, even though I mapped in graph view, it still generated the swim lane view automatically, meaning you can save your graph view as your print view or your swim lane, but you'll always have the ability to get those other views out of the system because our system really manages the content as data and then generates different views based on the audience. So even though I mapped in graph view, you see I still have the swim lane view. But if as a user, if I go in and change those settings again, and let's say I want to see that graph view, it is still available to me. So this was a very quick introduction on how to build the map. And then once this map is actually built, you have the full text version of this map that has been built in parallel. So this is truly your digital SOP, standard operating procedure or work instruction that you can read from end to end, to end. all the details, like I mentioned, click on the plus to read the entire end-to-end -end process online or on your mobile phone or tablet, as well as the ability to extract that information into 
a process book. A process book is a template based on, again, a purpose. For your end users, it's, again, standard operating pr procedures or work instructions. If you're in IT, it could be a system requirement. If you're responsible for testing changes, it could be a user acceptance test, it could be an audit doc. So as you see, you can set up many different types of templates and the system automatically generates the latest version, time stamping, user stamping, uh, and stamping uncontrolled and copied to ensure that all end users are always using the correct version of the content. So in this case, you see, I'll actually generate that doc which now it's opened in Word. So you see you have the cover page, including all of the information that we just captured online, now in a paper document, meaning the process maps, the levels of roles and responsibility, the description of each task. It could be a link to systems, uh, embedding documents, uh, images, really no limitation here. And these are available in both Word and PDF format. So that's the very quick jump start on how to build your first process using multiple different methods and how to then extract that information. Thank you.